Hello, my name is David Owens. I'm the Senior Director of Training Policy at Airbus. I'm an airline pilot with 25 years experience as an instructor and I'm current today on the A320, A330 and A380. What I'd like to do is talk to you about the new Airbus Golden Rules and why we think they're applicable to all aircraft everywhere. So let's begin. We'll update the Golden Rules We'll talk about uh, pilot monitoring as a reaction to that, and obviously we will then conclude. So let's start. Why did we look at the Golden Rules again? It all started following feedback for after the Qantas QF32 event, the 380 with an engine failure. Talking to the pilots of that event, they made a very interesting public statement. They said, from a training point of view, it doesn't matter what airplane you're flying, airmanship has to take over. In fact, Airbus has some golden rules which we all adhered to on the day. Aviate, navigate and communicate in that order. That was the old golden rules. That statement was made by Captain David Evans who was on the jump seat that day and probably had the best view of anybody of what happened. We thought about this and we thought about what those pilots did right on that day. What was so special about the, what they achieved and how they achieved it? And yes, it was the golden rules. And this was an opportunity for us at Airbus to look again at the golden rules and bring them up to date for today's environment. So that's what we did. So let's work through that together and see if you agree on what the golden rules should be. So all of you by now will have seen the golden rules. Let's start with the old golden rules. There were eight of them. That in itself is a little bit of a problem. That's a lot to remember. Here are the original golden rules from about 15 to 20 years ago. We started with the aircraft can be flown like any other aircraft. Fly, navigate, communicate in that order. One head up at all times. Cross check the accuracy of the FMS. Know your FMA at all times. When things don't go as expected, take over. Use the proper level of automation for the task and practice task sharing and back each other up. So together, let's look at those golden rules and see what we can do about making them more relevant to us today. Let's start with the first one. And this is one that always causes a lot of discussion amongst pilots. The aircraft can be flown like any other aircraft. Yes. No. Yes. Of course, it's an aircraft like any other. It has the same number of wings, engines. It has pilots and a flight deck and a tail. Of course, it's like any other aircraft. But at the same time, it's an Airbus envelope-protected fly-by-wire aircraft, and that makes it different. But wherever you agree, whether it's different or the same, whether it's a Boeing or any other aircraft, essentially this is not a golden rule. It's an observation. So can we agree that the first step we should do is, in fact, remove golden rule number one completely, reorder our golden rule so that fly, navigate, communicate becomes golden rule number one. This is the most important part of this presentation that we all agree that that is the rule by which we must fly. So we looked at that. We looked at fly, navigate, communicate. One of the questions that we were asked is why doesn't it say aviate? Much to my amusement, I was told by the language police in Airbus that there is no such word in English as aviate. So it becomes fly, fundamental, fly the aircraft, navigate, communicate. We wanted to update this part slightly as well. It's not wrong, but we felt it would be more, more appropriate to say in this order and with appropriate task sharing. Fly, navigate, communicate is not a task for one pilot. It's a task for a crew. So golden rule number one becomes fly, navigate, communicate, in this order and with appropriate task sharing. Good so far. Number two, one head up at all times. If most pilots are honest, they will say that that is in fact not what we do. Yes, it's a good idea. Yes, it's something very essential to safety, but it is not something that we do constantly. There are times when we have to share a piece of information together. What did we mean then when we said 15 years ago, one head up at all times? What we meant was don't become distracted. Don't allow something in the flight deck to stop pilot flying from his fundamental task. So what we mean by one head up at all times is don't be distracted, 
fly the aircraft. So in fact what we can do is take golden rule number two and absorb it into golden rule number one. So golden rule number one becomes fly, navigate, communicate and don't be distracted by anything around you. So we're down to six. We're making progress. Cross-check the accuracy of the FMS. 15 to 20 years ago when this was first written GPS was just coming on the scene. The accuracy of our navigation systems needed to be confirmed regularly and repeatedly. Today that is not the same. Even when we wrote the original golden rule we only said this applies to non-GPS aircraft. So in fact we would like to take this statement and make it today a fundamental part of golden rule number one. Navigate. Know the accuracy of your navigation. Ensure that your uh, navigation is continuously accurate. So we can take golden rule number two with our modern aircraft and absorb it into golden rule number one. Five golden rules now. Know your FMA at all times. This is absolutely as correct today as it was 20 years ago. And it's true for all modern glass cockpit aircraft understand what your aircraft is doing and what its systems are saying. But no is not quite enough. We need to say something slightly more than no. We believe that it's more fundamental to understand your FMA. Read it and know it and project that forward. Understand what the implications of the mode changes are. Understand your FMA at all times is golden rule number two. Number three when things don't go as expected, take over. It's absolutely true on all aircraft, especially multi-crew aircraft. Do something about it. So we like that. Number four, use the proper level of automation for the task. Yes. Again, that is still as true today as it ever was. And that level of automation may be zero manual flying. So let's look at number five. Practice task sharing and back up each other. Really, again, this is an essential way or part of how we fly an airplane. So I would propose that we take number five and talk about distraction and task sharing and move that into golden rule number one. But just before we do that, let's have a think about some of the other elements that are here. When things don't go as expected, take over. I want to change that very slightly to say, take action if things don't go as expected. We've just changed the word slightly. So now let's take that last golden rule and absorb it into number one. We now have four golden rules. It's much easier to remember four golden rules for most pilots than eight. Once we'd reached this stage, we then realise that there's one more little step that we can take that will make these golden rules even more powerful. We like them, we think they're right, but we just need to reorder them. So if we move number four up here and restructure our golden rules like this, now we have a logical sequence. Number one, fly, navigate and communicate. How? By using the proper level of automation for the task. How do we ensure that? By understanding the FMA at all times. And what do we do if none of that works? We do something about it. We take action. Four golden rules in a logical sequence written by pilots four pilots and these are the golden rules for all aircraft. This is what it looks like and you should have a copy by now that looks something like this. What we're going to do now is expand a little bit on each one of those golden rules and put more detail behind them. Number one, fly, navigate and communicate. Fly the aircraft, fly the aircraft, fly the aircraft and never stop. This is a fundamental to the safety of all aircraft everywhere from now on. Somebody must always take that responsibility and never stop flying the aircraft. Don't allow anything to distract you from that role. And it doesn't matter whether your role is pilot flying or pilot not flying. Pilot not flying must actively monitor all of the flight parameters and immediately highlight any deviations to the pilot flying. Again, this is a very important new step. And both pilots must retain their situational awareness and immediately resolve any uncertainty between them and do that as a crew. Number two, use the appropriate level of automation at all times. What does that mean? And that's actually quite challenging, but here's what we think we mean by this. 
The appropriate level of automation depends upon the situation and the task. And the only person who knows what the appropriate level is, is you, the pilot. Pilot judgment must prevail, including the selecting of manual flight if you think that's appropriate. But the pilot is the king. He must have the overall say about the appropriate level of automation. Understand the implication of the level of automation that you have selected. Make sure you do actually select what you think you want to select and then confirm that the aircraft is doing what you want it to do. It's a feedback loop, but use the appropriate level of automation. Number three, understand the FMA. Understand the FMA. How? Monitor it, announce it, confirm it. But ultimately, we cannot say it any more profoundly and simply than understand your FMA. So number four, Take action if things don't go as expected. That could be as simple as pilot flying changing the level of automation that he is using or reverting to manual flight if that's the sensible thing to do or by the pilot not flying taking some sort of action. That could be question, it could be challenge but ultimately and very importantly everybody must be aware that the pilot not flying is empowered to take control of the aircraft if that is necessary. It's a step pro process, it shouldn't be done lightly, but ultimately it is pilot not flying's responsibility to ensure the safety of the aircraft. But that raises a question, and that question is the term pilot not flying. We've just given him an active role, a task to perform. It's not a not flying role, it's a do something role. So when we wrote these golden rules, we realised that the time had come to change. Actively monitoring. The term pilot not flying is now consigned to history, and Airbus would like the term pilot monitoring to be used throughout and always. Pilot monitoring is the term that we want to hear and use. What does pilot monitoring mean? Here's a series of publicity shots that we made simply for um, a series of publicity sequence shots that we made for our own internal use and accidentally during the filming of this sequence we saw a perfect example of pilot monitoring. Here are two pilots on short final. Pilot monitoring is reading the checklist. In this next shot you can see that pilot flying has become distracted from his role of flying but immediately the other pilot becomes active in his monitoring. He's frozen the checklist, he's flying the aircraft and he's looking up so he has become an active pilot monitoring, ensuring the safe flight path and the safety of the aircraft. So to conclude, we've built a new set of golden rules together, but what does that mean? Well, we're working together. That's the key thing here, working together as an industry to drive a step change in safety. To do that, we have to evolve. We have to realise that we need to work together. Your input, our input, a synergy for safety. This is an example of that kind of work together as an industry, pilot monitoring golden rules. And what I'd like you to do, now that you've seen this presentation, is remember, all pilots everywhere and together always fly the aircraft, fly the aircraft, fly the aircraft. Thank you.